You know, we could have just kept listening to the music, but I know we have work to do. So thank you everybody for joining this webinar. I'm so excited about this one, downloading transaction into QuickBooks online and desktop. We're gonna learn how to enter hundreds of QuickBooks transactions in a matter of minutes. Let me show you how you can engage today. Just um, for those who may be new, uh, you can type your questions in the chat or in the Q&A. We're going to send you the recording within 48 hours. Um, you'll get that really, really soon. If you learned something new today, which I know you will, go ahead and share it on social media and make sure you tag us at TechSoup. If you need the closed caption, tap on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. Somebody has already done that. And I want to share about Quad. I don't know if you are a member of Quad yet, but Quad is amazing. If you haven't heard of it, Quad is a new platform we have here at TechSoup. And one of the good things about Quad, if you come in this community, you can have 10 members use the courses. I know a lot of times you pay for a course and it's just you, but there's so many other benefits to being a member of Quad. I'm going to put the link to Quad in the chat room in just a moment, but I'm going to turn this over to Greg so he can get with the QuickBooks webinar. Greg, go ahead. Take it cool. away. All right, man. Hey guys, how's it going? So we only have an hour, so this is going to be quickity quick. Um, Want to find out, uh, put it in the chat. And by the way, I should tell you, so if you want to ask me a question while I'm talking, put it in the chat. I will see it. Like Pam wants to know, how do you join quad Aretha? Um, I can see that Sandy like the music. Um, whereas uh, if you have a longer question, Barbara Starley, who is a CPA as well, she specializes in houses of worship. Um, Barbara is going to be manning the Q and a on the back end. Uh, say hello to everybody, uh, Barbara. Uh, so, okay, cool. But uh, so uh, if you have any questions for Barbara, please uh, ask, uh, there. Um, and how many of you have seen me teach before? Put it in the chat. Who has seen me che teach before? Yes or no? We've got 144 people here. Um, who has seen me teach? Uh, wow. Okay. So it looks like most people have. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. It's like almost everybody has. That's in that's insane. Okay, cool. Well, then I don't need to talk about myself. Um, the only thing that I will say um, is, uh, yes, I'm a CPA. I specialize in nonprofits and I own the company. Uh, QuickBooks made easy for nonprofits, and uh, I'll just go to that that site uh, because I did want to highlight. We have twice a year. Um, we do a three day webinar series. It's two and a half hours a day for three days, uh, and it's coming up for people that are using the desktop version. Uh, at the end of this month and then the beginning of next month, it's going to be for people that are in the online edition. So um, October thirty one the first and second for people using desktop, November 7th, 8th, and 9th for people that are using the online. Normally it's $299. Uh, we're going to give you a discount coupon that I'll give you at the end of the session um, for $40 off, although there's the code TS40 off. But anyway, so uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to cover downloading, how to connect your QuickBooks with your bank for downloading transactions. And what I'm speaking of is both for bank accounts, checking accounts and savings accounts. I'm also talking about credit cards that you use to buy stuff with. That's specifically what we're referring to. This is a feature that's available both in desktop as well as online edition. Uh, and I should probably ask that poll now. I am kind of curious to see uh, who's using desktop and who's using online. So uh, I'm going to uh, launch a little poll here. I see y'all are answering in the chat. Thank you. But I'm kind of curious who's using QuickBooks desktop and who's using QuickBooks online. Uh, go ahead and answer uh, in the um, in the polls here. So we've got 156 people here. And so far, 122 of you have answered. Um, a number of you are doing both. So make sure you answer in the poll. Uh, one person says neither. So I'm wondering, uh, Workstation One, why are you here? Uh, oh, hey, Allison, how are you? Cool. Uh, Allison with TechSoup is here. Uh, love, Allison. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and share the results. And here we have 54% of you have QuickBooks Online, 38% of you have QuickBooks Desktop, and then about 10% of you are using 
both. All right. So um, here you can see the results right there. Okay. So I'll stop sharing. So, um, and by the way, uh, in case you don't know this, um, QuickBooks Online, go to QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks Online looks like this. This is QuickBooks Online. All right. And then this is QuickBooks Desktop. All right. And so we'll take a look at both of those. Um, both of these softwares will allow you to download transactions from the bank. Um, we're going to show you how to connect the bank. We're going to show you how to download the transactions. And we're going to show you how to point them um, and add them to your QuickBooks file. All right. So um, uh, I don't even think I need to worry about this. All right. So how to connect your QuickBooks to your bank for downloading transactions. All right. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it nice and slow. Um, there is a recording. You'll get the recording. Um, I am kind of curious, though. Um, I have another poll I'm going to ask um, because I'm sure some of you are already downloading. So uh, let's see what your level of experience is with downloading transactions from the bank. Never done it before. I set it up, but I'm not using it. I've used it a bit and messed things up. <laughs> uh, I use it well, but have some questions. And I know it really well, but I'm hoping to have some extra tips given to me. So, um, I mean, hey, it's a free session. Why not, Ryan? Um, So we got 166 people now. We're almost everybody has answered. Um, Trina put in the chat. Uh, I may use QBO Plus for nonprofit, but I've never used it. What are the differences between Plus and Advanced? So um, this is a has nothing to do with downloading transactions, Trina. But I'll tell you, you really should be using Advanced. It's one hundred and sixty dollars a year with TechSoup versus Plus, which is seventy five dollars a year. You can have up to twenty five users in at the same time with QuickBooks Advanced instead of five the QuickBooks Plus. The major thing that I like about Advanced is that it allows you to back up your data file so that you can rewind wind your data file and get back to where you were before you screwed things up. You can't do that with plus. You can do that with advanced. Brookfield, I don't cover importing IIF files. This is about downloading from the bank. Um, I do cover that uh, in my big sessions, but won't be covering that here. So here's the result. As you can tell, over half of the people here have never even done it before. So that means that there are about 30 five people that know it pretty well and have very particular questions. So we're going to try and get you covered too, but got to be understanding that there are people that have no clue what's going on. So uh, we'll have to be careful to make sure that everybody is happy. Okay. Uh, uh, Stripe. Um, somebody mentioned about Stripe. We're going to talk about connecting from bank. The Stripe does not connect directly to QuickBooks. You have to use a third-party app. The one that I like to recommend is Sender, S-Y-N-D-E-R, Sender, but it costs money, all right? So enough of that. Let's move on. So um, the first thing that I want to explain for people that hear, oh, good, I can connect my bank to QuickBooks, so I don't have to enter a bunch of transactions, it works really good for credit cards and debit cards transactions, is they get scared because they're afraid that what QuickBooks is going to do is it'll not only download the transactions, it'll assume what the expense account is, and it'll just add it to your file, and it might be pointed to the wrong place, or it might have already been an entered manually by you with your fingers, and now you've got double entries in there. So people get scared about it. So I want to explain something to you. Let me tell you what's not happening. When you connect your bank to QuickBooks, what's not happening is the bank is not correcting, is connecting directly into QuickBooks. That is not what's happening. What happens is when you connect to your bank, it goes into a waiting room, okay? I call it a waiting room. Some people call it a holding tank. It's basically a location that's within your QuickBooks program, but it's not part of your financial statements yet. It's not been subtracted or added to your bank account. It's just a list somewhere, almost like an IIF file, Brookfield. It's just sitting there waiting to be added. And then what you do is you go through each transaction in the list. You go through her, 
you look at him, you look at her, and you decide where you want to point them, and then you add them to QuickBooks, okay? So let's take a look at what that waiting room looks like. Um, the waiting room in the online edition, uh, to get to it, there's a couple of different ways you can go to get to the waiting room. You could click on bank transactions right there, but actually I like to go over here. And anytime there's a bank account that's connected, you'll know it because if there's any transactions that need to be added, it'll be in blue. So there's 27 transactions in the waiting room waiting to add to QuickBooks for this checking account. And there's 79 for the savings account. And there's 56 for this American Express account. All right. And I can just click right on there and take me to the waiting room. So here is the waiting room right here. Um, now I've got three accounts that I have connected. All right. And I'll show you how to connect an account in a second, but these are all of the transactions. These transactions are not in QuickBooks. They're in a, in a waiting room. Okay. If you are in the desktop version, we go to banking, we go to bank feeds and we go to bank feed center. And this is where your waiting room is. And your waiting room is going to look very similar. Uh, and where is the waiting room? There it is right there. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Now, this waiting room, the, it's kind of broken out. There's recognized, partially recognized, unrecognized, and already added. I'm going to go to the unrecognized. This is where the majority of them are. So this is what it looks like in QuickBooks Desktop. This is what it looks like in QuickBooks Online, okay? So let's talk about how to add, okay? So that's the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to add, okay? Now, um, I'll do it with the online edition first. The online edition is free to add, okay? And it's free to download. All the banks pretty much work with it and it's free. The desktop edition costs money sometimes, not from Intuit, but from your bank. Whereas the online edition is always free. OK, but they both kind of work the same. So to do this in the online edition, um, it says link account right here. So I can probably click there and it'll take me right where I add an account. So I'm going to put the name of my bank. I'm going to put Wells Fargo. Now, what it does is it's going to go to your bank's website um, and it's going to go to not some back end thing at, at your bank that you can't access, it goes to the same website that you go to to access your bank information and look at statements and transactions and stuff like that. So if you don't have your username and your password, your boss does, you'll need to get it from them in order to make this work. And if they won't give it to you, then you need to ask them, why are you having me do the accounting if you don't trust me? Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click sign on. And... Um, each bank kind of does it a little bit differently, but this one, uh, Wells Fargo is going to send me a text to verify that I'm actually the person because it's going to access my bank account. So, and I'm going to put my little code in here that it gave me. Okay. And then I'm going to click submit. Okay. So it's giving me all of my bank accounts. Okay. They're right there. And, um, so let me scroll down to the bottom here. I'm kind of hiding this from you because it kind of has a bunch of private information. And there we go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. And then here's all of my bank accounts. I click connect. And uh, then it's going to connect. So after it connects, let me see where I am. I, where is my, there it is right there. So now it's connecting. And once it connects, and I think I have to hide this again, sorry, because I think it gives me actual information. Yeah. So once it connects, I don't want you to see, it gives me a listing of each account with the balance in the account. And then I'll show you this first one. And then over here, um, it it's asking me, hold on. Yeah. At the bottom, let me go back to the bottom here. I need to hide some of this stuff so I can see it. Okay. Uh, there's a little connect button and it asks you which one do you want to connect. So I check off 
which one that I want to connect. And when I decide that I want to connect it, I'll just show you when you check it off. So I clicked on this and then this pops up. So what you do, this is where you connect it to the bank account that's in your chart of accounts list. Okay. And we'll just connect it to this one. Okay. So that's what you do. Now, when you're done, I need to move this over again. I'm so sorry. But in order to do this well, I have to do it for in real life. And then you get to see everything. But um, let's see here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. All right. And we'll go down to the bottom. Okay, cool. So at the bottom of the screen, there is going to be, and this is a screen a lot of people miss, um, and all this happens in the desktop as well, so don't worry, guys. Um, but it says, how far back do you want to pull transactions from? Now, here we are in October. I probably don't want to pull transactions from the beginning of the year, okay? I could, because again, they're just going to be in the waiting room. They're not going to be added automatically. And once they're in the waiting room, you can throw them away out of the waiting room if you want to. Or you can add them, or you can match them which I'll show you if it's already in QuickBooks, so it won't duplicate. I'm just going to say I want this month, okay? Now, if it's a credit card that you're doing, I'm going to give you a suggestion. Listen very carefully for those of you that are going to download credit cards. I'm going to give you a suggestion. You know how a credit card, the billing cycle ends in the middle of the month, like the 17th or the 15th or whatever. So what you want to do is here we are in October. So if I'm going to connect my credit card, let's say my credit card statement drops on the 11th of October. So I don't want to download any transactions from the 11th of October backwards because I'm just going to use my old method for that. I'm just going to enter the bill and pay it or whatever. I want to start using it for the next billing cycle. So what I would do is if it was a credit card, I would click custom and I would pick the date. October 12th. So then all the transactions that get downloaded would be from the credit card statement that's coming up next. Does that make sense to y'all? Did that make sense to y'all? Put it in the chat. Does that make sense? Y'all put it in the chat. Okay, cool. Okay. So, um, cool. All right, great. So, um, if it's for a bank account, I would probably just do the ones, you know, for the current month. So I'm going to say, you know, 10 one, and then I'm going to click connect. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to download the transactions. They're not going to be in QuickBooks. They're going to be in the waiting room. Okay. So it's only going to take a second. It brings in the transactions. Wow, we're only 20 minutes in and we're already learning. All right. Okay, so now here is my homepage, but we should see that new bank account. There it is right there with 48 transactions to review. And here's the 48 transactions here. Okay, now let's go over to QuickBooks Desktop. For those of you that have been waiting, let me show you how to add an account from QuickBooks Desktop, okay? So chat me up. Where are you? I'll only take a second for this, guys. Where are you? Put it in the chat. Are you a desktop user? Let's hear it. It's your time to, to, it's your time to shine. All right. Okay, cool. Now, desktop, you're going to go to banking. You're going to go to bank feeds. And you're going to go to set up bank feed for an account right there. Now, when you do this, I will tell you, the online people have it better than you. The online people, they connect it once. They never have to worry about it again. It downloads transactions automatically every day, and it's always free. People that are in the online edition have it really good. People in the desktop version, not so much, okay? Now, there are some banks like American Express. If you have an American Express card, you put American Express as your bank, you click continue, you put your username and your password here. Hopefully they hide it. Yeah. 
We click log in, and then you get a very similar screen like we did before. You pick the card, just as like picking the bank. You authorize, and then after that, it's connecting right now. And then just like with the online edition, it's going to ask you. Um, now I've already down. I've already connected this card, so that's why it's saying that it's running into a problem. But it will ask you what date range you want to download to, and it'll ask you what card you want to connect to. So it works the same way. Um, and then once you have um, the American Express downloaded, it will appear in the bank feeds. And I'm going to go to the banking, go to bank feeds. Here's the bank feed center. And it doesn't look exactly the same as the online edition, but it's similar with the little block up here. Here's all the unrecognized transactions, and we'll add them. And we're going to talk about those in a second. Okay, see, I already had the Amex connected. That's why it gave me an issue. All right. All right. So um, when it comes to most other banks besides American Express, when I go to add a bank, I'll do one for Wells Fargo. I want to show you something. I'll put in my username and my password. Let me move this out of the way so you. Yeah, I'll put it over here. Okay. Um... <laughs> Let you know I'm doing this for real at least, right? Uh, let's see. All right. Next. And okay, it gave me an issue. Um, so it's saying that I don't have the right login information. So that's unfortunate. Um, let me try a different bank. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and try a different bank. And... I will tell you, I'm not surprised um, that uh, this is happening with the online edition. It's a lot tickier. Uh, and set up an account. I'm going to try this one more time. Uh, let's see. Bank of America. All right. So we go here. Yeah. And again, you're going to use your user ID and your password. And I don't have a Bank of America account, so it's not going to work. So um, I can't show you the next screen here, unfortunately. But the connection will work the same. All right. The, the, the one thing that I wanted to tell you, there was a screen I wanted you to see that I can't, I can't get to appear in the desktop because I can't get into my I can't get into my file. But um the screen will tell you sometimes that there is a direct connect and there's a web connect. And if you're in desktop land, the direct connect is going to cost money and you're going to need to call your bank and tell them that you want to pay them it's like 10 or 15 dollars a month in order to have a direct connect. The advantage there is that you don't have to, you just push a button and it downloads. Most of the time though, with desktop users, they literally are going to their bank's website and they're downloading a file, a web connect file from the bank's website is what they're doing. Um, and the only way I can show you that is to go to my own personal bank's website. Don't necessarily want to do that here, but um, does anybody have any questions about downloading directly from the website, going to the website and creating a file that you import and connect. Does anybody know or have dealt with that before that's in the desktop world and has questions? Um, you just simply go to your website. Um, I mean, I'll start it here. You go to your Wells Fargo website, and once you sign in, you've got to find where the downloaded transactions are. Um, I'll just go to one of my accounts here, and uh, I'll go to this one. And uh, let's see, where is, 
I'm looking at my transaction here and I need to find where you download. Look at that download account activity. It's in a different place on every single um, bank, but you click here, you pick what time period you want to download and you're going to be looking for something that says web connect. Okay. So this is how you'll do it for free. Okay. So I'm going to click um, done it. The interface seems clunky. Have to re-log in each time for the download file. That's correct. Every time you have to re do you have to go back into the site. I'm going to download the file. It's downloading right now. It's right up here. It's called checking six QBO. Um, I'm going to see where it is in the folder. I want to recognize where it is. There it is right there in my downloads. So then what you do to actually import it in to your desktop file is you go to file, utilities, import, web connect file. You click it and then you go to where you had that file uh, downloads right here. This is not for the faint of heart. I click checking, I click open. And then it wants to know which account do you want to connect it to. A lot of people make the mistake of creating a new account, which would be wrong. Instead, what you would want to do is you would want to point it to your existing account. You click continue. The transactions will be downloaded. And then you'll be able to access them through the bank feeds. All right. And then you'll be able to add them. So we're going back in. So now... Uh, look, there's the checking account right there. So we have 237 transactions that we downloaded here. And here's the American Express with its transactions right there. Does Is that better? I feel like I did that a little better. So just kind of summarizing in the online edition, it's automatic. It happens for you. It's easy. It's free. In the online edition, if you want to, unless you want to pay money, you have to go to your bank's website create a web connect file, download it to your computer, and then import it in. It's still a cool thing to do, okay? But um, one thing also about the desktop version is that uh, if you have an old version, like Bruce has 2021, um, after this year, you're probably not going to be able to download anymore, okay? Because... After three years of the desktop version, it stopped working. It stops working with this download feature. Okay. Um, and Steve says the transaction list looks different for him. So there's a couple of different ways of looking at the transaction list, Steve. Um, if you go to where your preferences are uh, and you go to, uh, where is that thing? Let's see if it's desktop view. There's a place that controls what, maybe it's under banking or checking. Let's see if it's here. Here we are, bank feeds. There's an advanced mode, there's an express mode, and there's a classic mode. I'm in the advanced mode. So take a look at that, Steve. All right. All right. So now once we have the transactions in, I'm going to go back to the online edition. So listen very carefully, okay? I'm going to go back to my little um, my little deck here. Uh, we showed you how to download transactions. Now we're going to show you how to point them. Web Connect, buddy, not CSV. Web Connect. Okay. Um, so how to point them? So these transactions. We'll go. We'll start with the online, and then we'll go to the desktop. Um, where is my online edition? Oh, it's over here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is um, I just want you to understand what the theory behind how this is going to work. What you're supposed to do is you can think of this as like a waiting room. Okay. And every day you go into the waiting room. And if you're on the online edition, it's just going to have new transactions. If you're on the desktop version, you probably are going to have to download probably just do it once a week. But anyway, once it's in the waiting room, what you need to do is clear out the waiting room. 
Okay. You need to get rid of all these things. Now, there are three ways that you can get rid of them. One of them is you can simply add them. Okay. So we'll do, we'll do one where we just add it. Okay. Um, this $120, this was a fee um, that I had to pay QuickBooks for something. All right. So what you never want to do, never, is you never want to click the add button before you've made sure that it's pointed correctly. And you can't tell whether it's pointed correctly until you click on it and it opens up th something called the system tray. And this system tray will tell you what the name of the vendor is, payroll service. See, it guessed salaries and wages. It's wrong. So this is really payroll service fee. Um, well, I'll just put it to bank charges. Okay. Um, if you understand how to use QuickBooks, you know that you use classes for to break out your expenses by function, program, admin, or fundraising. Uh, I'm going to go to admin for this. And if you want to use QuickBooks to track grants, this is where you would point it to a grant. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click one of the grants here. Um, you can, if you want, add an attachment of a literal receipt if you would like to. And then when I'm done, I'm going to click add. But before I click add, I just want you to see we're on the blue one. There's 27 transactions. I'm about to add one of them. Okay. Uh, and actually, you know what? I think I'm going to go to the bank account too, just to kind of really hammer home the point of what's happening here. I'm going to open up a second instance of QuickBooks. And I'm going to go to the chart of accounts list. Let's go to the chart of accounts list. And right now, we are adding transactions for the Bain Bank account, 2725. If you look at the chart of accounts, it says there is uh, this, this bank balance. That's the column. This is the transactions as they exist at the bank. This is the column that tells you what's in actual QuickBooks. That's why it says QuickBooks balance. So right now there's $176,700.44. And there are 27 transactions that I need to add. So I'm going to add this one for $120. 120. I'm going to click add. Now, instead of 27 transactions, there's 26 transactions. And if I go back to my register and refresh the screen, instead of it being 176,700, now it's 176,580. So does that make sense to y'all? Does that make sense? So that's how to add. Now, somebody already asked a really good question. What if I want to split it? Okay. This was my payroll right here. I'm going to open up this and let's say I need to split it. There's a big split button right here. I'm going to click split and this is where I can split it. So I'll put uh, salaries and wages. I'll put a part of it in one uh, to one class and I'll put a different part of it to another class. I'll put this part. This is salaries for the guidance center. This is admin salaries. This is paid for out of a grant. This is not, okay? And I can add other fields if I want to. So I'll say 5,000 of it, just to make it easy here, uh, is going to the uh, human, uh, is going to the guidance center. And the rest of it, 434310, is, is admin. So now I'm going to add that. So I'll click, and before I do that, 176,580, apply and accept. So now it's asking us, do you want to create a rule? Do you want to use the same category for all expenses from QuickBooks? We definitely don't. I don't like um, telling uh, QuickBooks to create a rule on its own. I want to create rules and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So I'm just going to click no here. Okay. But now there's only 25 transactions. Okay. And if I go back over here, um, this is 176,580. I'm going to refresh. And now it's 167,237. So it's gone down. Now, 
What if after I added something, I decided that I didn't want to add it the way that I did? I want to undo it and redo it again. You see this field that says categorized. When I click on it, it shows me everything I added. And I can, if I want to, undo. I'll undo that 120. And now it's at back at 26. I go back to 26. And then my 120 is back where it was uh, waiting to be added again. All right. So um, that is um, the online edition. And that's how you add. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to add in the desktop version. It's pretty simple. Um, you tell me. How do you think that you would add? Well, you could push this ad. Should you push this ad before you've checked where it's going? What do you think? Yes or no? Absolutely not. What do you think I would do to click this to open it up so that I can see more of it? Anyone know how to open it up so I can see where it's being pointed? So you would think you could just click on it, but you can't. So if you go over here to the right, Add more details, add more details. So I'm going to click add more details. And here's where I can say where it's going to. I can say who it is that got this. Um, I can say what expense account to point it to. Point it to telephone. Uh, right here. If it's paid for out of a grant, I can put it there. Uh, I can have it go to a particular class, okay? You see add line here? Yes, Kathy, add line and you can split it. Isn't that kind of cool, Kathy, how you can answer, ask a question even though there's like 180 people in here I can give you, isn't that neat? So anyway, I'm gonna save it and add it to the register, but before I do that, just like I did in the online edition, there's 337 transactions that I gotta enter, okay? And let's go into the, oh, it won't even let me go in there, darn it. Well, there's 337. I'm going to go ahead and save. And it'll add it. And now there's 336. You see where it says added to register right there? We'll click it. And there it is. Can I undo it? No, I can't. Okay, so that's one difference between the online and the desktop version. Now, the next question people always ask is, what happens if the transaction's already in there? Can I match it so that I don't add it again? <laughs> Jazz. <laughs> I don't know, all of y'all weren't here, but at the very beginning of the session, I asked, what do you want, steak, chicken, or fish? And here we are 45 minutes in, and Jazz says steak. So I think I love you, Jazz. All right, so anyway... <laughs> Don't worry, we only got 20 minutes more and we're done. So what I'm going to do to kind of show you this, I'm going to take this one for 120 and I'm going to add it manually because conceivably it would have already been entered um, and then you would want to match it, but it's not entered, so I need to add it. So I'm going to go to plus new and I'm going to add it as an expense. And what was it? It was 10, 12. So I'm just kind of doing this so you can see how it'll match stuff, all right? So this was 10, six, we'll say it doesn't have to be the exact same date. Um, and we'll just leave that blank and we'll say it was $120 and we'll point it to, uh, we'll do admin and we'll point it to a grant. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and then I'm going to go back over here and now the 120, can we match it? Well, it's going to try and find a match. I'm going to refresh the screen. Well, let's see if it finds a match. Look at that. One match found. Isn't that kind of cool? So um, when I click match, it's not going to add it again. It's simply going to attach the downloaded information to the transaction that's already in QuickBooks. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click match. And so there was 26. I'm going to click match. Now there's only 25. When I go here, I'm going to refresh this screen. I'm just going to refresh the screen and I'm going to show you what this $120 transaction that we entered manually looks like. I'm going to go back to it. Here it is. 
Now, when I look at the transaction, you see this little thing right there? It wasn't there before. This tells us that this was entered manually and then the bank matched it. Okay. It even tells us, okay, it was manually matched. Of course, I can unmatch it if I don't want it to be unmatched. Okay. So um, if you have a payable, Brookfield wanted to know. Um, so I'm going to um, unmatch this. Let's do a bill for $120 and see if we can match that $120 to a bill. Well, actually, let's pick a different one. Let's pick, uh, we'll pick this through, we'll pick this 187.50. So this is Capital Web Group on 1011. So I'm going to do a bill. And this is for those of you that enter bills. And uh, I'm going to do a bill for 187.50. And let's see, 187.50, and let's see, I'm going to save it, and let's see if it recognizes it. Where's that 187.50? There it is. I'm going to refresh it. Sometimes it recognizes it, sometimes it doesn't, uh, but let's see if it thought that perhaps this payment went with this bill. Um, let's see. Doesn't look like it at this point, but of course it thinks that the name of the vendor is capital two. So I'm going to get rid of that vendor name and then let's see if perhaps it does a little bit better. Now, oh, it's still sitting here. Uh, is there a way that I can get rid of the name? The memo says capital group, so it may not recognize it because it's looking for something that says capital group. Yeah, that's just the description field. It should work, but maybe it's not. Let's see if we pick find match. Look at that. It found it. So that's the other thing you can do. You can pick find match, and then it'll match it. Okay. The only other thing that I wanted to tell you about matching has to do with deposit. So in answer to your question, yes, you can match a payment to a bill. Okay. Deposits. How many of you use sales receipts? And that's this screen right here, sales receipts. And I'm going to go back to the desktop in a second. But how many of you use sales receipts here? Yeah, they're called donor receipts in the desktop version. Um, yes. So if you use these or you use invoices, does anybody use invoices? Anybody use invoices? So... I want to show you something. When it comes to sales receipts or invoices, you can match deposits to those as well. Let me show you. You see this $4,615 deposit? Do you see the number six right here? Anybody know what this number six means right there? Here, I'll zoom in to make it bigger. Anybody can guess why there's a six here? This all came down from the bank. This dollar amount, the whole transaction, we're just in the waiting room. What's this six mean? It means that it brought the images down as well. So I can actually click on this. This is so cool. Wells Fargo does this. I can make the picture bigger. And then I can see there are one, two, three, four, five transactions. And each one is showing. You know, if I go to the next transaction, it would be, there'll be a check. Um, where's the other ones? Uh, that's that. That's that. Oh, next image. There it is. So there's a check. There's a check. There's a check. So this is really kind of cool to see what makes up the deposit. And it's right in the bank fee. So what you can do is I'm going to click on this one to open it up. And then I'm going to click find match. And then all of my sales receipts and all of my payments and all of my invoices will be there. And I can pick and choose which ones total up this amount, all right, which is amazing. So then I'm going to click save. So what this does is it basically means you don't have to record a deposit. It'll record the deposit for you and match it to the sales receipts. Yeah, isn't that nice? Um, and the invoices. So I'll save that one. And now we're at 25. Okay. 
Now in the desktop version, the matching is going to work the same, same way. In fact, it already recognized one. There was a transaction in here for $51 and one cent. I'll actually show you that I have it in here. Um, where is the find, uh, edit, find amount 5101. There it is. So here's a transaction that I entered. This was for a credit card. Here's a transaction right here. All right. And it noticed it. It matched it. It was like, wow, I see that. It's matched. So when I click confirm, that's going to simply take it out of here, 336. And now we're at 335. Okay. And I'll go back to here. It's interesting. I wonder if I close this and reopen it. I wonder if when I look for it, it'll have some sort of an attachment now. Let's see if it does. It doesn't look like it. I don't see anything here. Okay. Will it match batches of checks that are deposited remotely? Yeah, that's what I just did. It'll allow you to pick multiple ones. That's what I just did in the online transactions. Okay. So, um, I want to answer questions because we only have like 10 minutes left, but there's one more thing I need to teach you and that's the rules. So let me just show you about the rules. I'll do it in the desktop first and then I'll do it in the online rules helps automate this to where you don't have to fix where they think things are going to be pointed. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this downloaded as, or I'm going to click it. So it's in order. So all the stuff that's together, like you see this roasters, I go to roasters all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rule. Yeah, you're right, Francis. Not all banks are going to give you the images, um, but Wells Fargo does. And I think Bank of America does too. But anyway, watch this. Rather than clicking on each roasters, every time I go to roasters, I put it to meals. So I'm just going to create a rule. So I'm going to click rules, add rule. And then I'm going to call the rule roasters that's just the name of the rule description if the description begins with contains i'm going to put contains and then what they're referring to is this description right here you see this this right here this is a description that came down from the bank so anytime the word roasters is in it then i'm going to want it to recognize it roasters there's no apostrophe. And then I can tell it, make the payee, you know, whatever I want the pay to be. Maybe I just have a generic pay called restaurants because I won't, don't want each restaurant adding to my vendor list. I'll just make it this instead. And then I'm going to point it to, well, I'm going to point it to office supplies, even though it's a meal. That way I can hide the fact that I'm using the company credit card to buy my meals. Um, <laughs> bet you didn't think you'd get that kind of, help here. And then this is where you can point it to a grant and a class. So this is basically a rule now. Okay. So anytime it sees roasters, I'm going to go ahead and save it. It's now going to recognize it. So I'm going to go back over here to where roasters is. And now if you go to recognized, all of the roasters are here. You see? So, um, and I can still click on them uh, to make sure that they are pointed correctly, but the rule is there. If there's an exception, Sherry, that's why you want to check and change it. So maybe for one of them, it's different, but I'm going to say all of these are good and I can add them all at the same time. I'm going to click add. And then now they've all been added based on the rules, okay? Same, the rules are even better in the online edition. Look at the rules in the online edition. Um, let me show you. This is the coolest thing. I'm going to go to the Amex for this, and then we'll finish. Um, I'm going to sort by description. And I think that's how you need to go through the list anyway, sort it by description, um, because that kind of gets you the same stuff or usually in the same place, so... Um, here's three roasters here. So we'll do that. So, um, I'm going to go up to the rules, which is right here rules. 
and go to rules. These rules are cooler, and you'll see why in a second. Roasters, money out, description contains roasters, and the uh, expense account. I wanted it to be uh, office supplies. Let me see if it just lets me type. Oh, the transaction. This is a transaction type. It says an expense because it's a credit card. So I would put it to an expense. That's the type of transaction. Um, and then this is going to office supplies. And here's the payee. And this is the customer. So I'm creating the rules. So far, it looks very similar. But look at this. You see assign more. Here's where you can put the class. So I'll put the class. But let's see. There should be one thing um, I want to make sure that you don't do is you see where this says automatically confirm transactions. Always make this turned off. If this is turned on, that thing that I told you where it automatically goes into the waiting room, but it doesn't go into QuickBooks, if this is on, it'll automatically go into QuickBooks. And I think that's crazy, particularly if you have uh, some, um, uh, uh, some exceptions. So there should be another field here where I can also add, um, I can add splits. There it is right there. Add a split. So this is something that you can't do in the online edition, but you can do with your rules in the desktop. So I'm going to say make 49% of it go to fundraising and make 51% of it still go to office supplies, but put it to perhaps... A different program and you can keep adding splits if you want so i'm going to go ahead and click save all right and now when we go back to the transactions we'll go back to where uh those are the then there should be rules now yep see so now these have rules i'll open them up click edit the split and we can see it did the math for me 994 and 1035 versus the next one, which was, edit, which was 1049 and 1092. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just check off all three of those. And I'm going to click accept, and it takes them right out. All right. So uh, it will memorize the customer's name as well. I just didn't put it in there. All right. So a um, couple of quick things, and then we'll do questions. But in general, the goal is connect it. I want you to try it today. I want you to connect it today. You do not have to add things to your books. And as a matter of fact, just to kind of make you feel a little bit better, what I can do is I can check all of these and I can exclude and it removes them all from the waiting room. So if it freaks you out, you can remove them all from the waiting room just as quickly as you added them. It won't mess up your books. All right. Okay, so um, the uh, if you need more training, um, we have our three-day webinar series coming up. If you haven't taken it, it's fun. It's two and a half hours a day, three days. This is the ones for the desktop. This is the one for the online. And uh, it gives you, when you click on it, this is all the information on it, uh, all the different things we're going to be covering. And uh, the code is let me show you where the code is uh here's the code right here uh it's ts40 off so um we've got five minutes left um and i want to answer questions so um let's see um terry said in quickbooks online how do you add a credit card well it's very easy um if it's amex or then you do you, you just well i mean I'll just link account here. So if it's, I assume, like a, a Visa or a MasterCard, you pick the bank that it's connected to and you go through the exact same features that I did here. Nothing different, okay? So Terry, there's nothing unusual. Do you have a question about it? Um, Kathy, can receipts be uploaded to the desktop? I think that I missed it. Yes, they can. 
um, when you are in a transaction in the desktop, can you add a receipt? So if you notice, let me see if I click add more details. Um, it doesn't let you add the receipt when you're in the middle of entering the transaction, but once the transaction is entered, then you can add the receipt. And there's actually, I'm going to go ahead and click here. You see this little attach file? Here's where you can attach a receipt. And actually, there's an app that you can get on your phone where you can take a picture of the receipts and then you can upload them. Uh, and uh, there's a whole receipt uh, link where you can add them. I don't, um, I don't have this turned on here, but there's a whole feature for that. But the shorter answer is yes, you can do it. What if credit card is not connected to the bank? What credit card is not connected to a bank, Aretha? Uh, American Rubina. Express. You just you just pick American Express. You okay. just that is your bank. So if it's not, and you go to add an account, um, doesn't matter whether you're in desktop or online. You just type American Express. Okay. Cool. Okay, and they ask it as their own bank. Um, uh let's see uh can i'm trying to see do we do we have to refresh linking banks and credit cards in the online aversion shyland no you don't it happens automatically um karen has a really long question uh i've been using sales receipts put it to undeposited funds when i have a batch of checks then i do a deposit the deposit just says your sales just comes, just, 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 just. Uh, what you're doing karen is fine um uh about just then I do a deposit. Each deposit has these checks as a sales as a Yeah, no, that's perfect. Karen, you're doing everything right. Uh let's see who else. Um, I think that's it. Let me look at the bottom here and see. Um, can you go over how to properly add transfers from the waiting room? Transfers are a pain in the butt. Um, what this means is this is when you're transferring money from one account to another account, all right? Maybe you're transferring money from the savings to the checking uh, or from the save from the checking to the savings. I think I had one here, if I'm not mistaken. Did I? Let me see if it's over here. I thought I had one of these in here. Uh, let's see. Let's see it here. Um, there it is. Here's a transfer. So basically, if you click on this, you want to open it up. And basically, what this means is you are in the Wells Fargo savings account. So this transfer, you pick the other bank account that it transferred from. So let's say it transferred to the savings. And then you click add. Now, presumably, that same transaction will appear in the download from the savings account. And it'll connect it. It'll say that's been paired with another transaction. And then you just confirm the pair. Now, one thing about these transfers, a lot of times you'll go in here and it'll say record transfer when it's not really a transfer. This happens because the smart computer, the AI, reads the word transfer in the description, whereas it's not really a transfer. It's not going from one bank account to another. The word transfer is just in here, okay? So in that case, you click on it and click categorize and change it from a transfer to a transaction, and then you entered it, okay? Um, is there a resource to help me set up and manage PayPal correctly in QBO? That's something, a PayPal is a bank account like any other account, um, so you would handle it the same exact way as any other bank accounts that you have. I talk about it in the three-day series. Um, we updated our QuickBooks desktop to 2023. When we download transactions, it's saved in a new bank account. Yes, you can merge the two bank accounts, Romina, and then it'll merge them together. Okay. Um, Barbara uh, is saying there's a question here. Is QBO app usable for any QBO level simple start? Um, are you saying, uh, Barbara, can you come on the line and tell me, are they talking about what's a QBO app? Do you think they're just talking about downloading transactions? 
I think they're, I think she's asking the app that you can take pictures. Oh, so um, I don't know the answer to that question. I didn't um, either. <laughs> but if you go to uh, QBO app for receipts, um, I need to go to the app store. Uh, this is a little automation. I don't know what it works for, but um, I think if you Google it, you'll be able to, I would teach it, but I don't, you know, I don't have the time right now. I don't know if um, uh, works with essentials. So I don't know if it works with simple start or essentials, but to be completely honest with you, you really need to have QuickBooks plus or QuickBooks advanced anyway. Okay. Any special thing about when you use a Venmo account? Not really. A Venmo account should be the same as a PayPal account. It should be a separate bank account. Um, can you please show us how to merge two bank accounts? So you merge the same way you merge any accounts. Um, you change the name of one to the name of the other. So let's say I want to merge these two. Now, it may give me an issue because they're both connected to the bank, but let's try it. So I'm going to change the name of this checking account to this checking account. I'll do these two and see if it see if it takes the merge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and edit this one. Well, actually, I'm going to edit this one. I'm going to copy the name, control C, because it's got to have the exact same name in order for it to merge. And then I'm going to edit and I'm going to change the name here, control V. I'm going to get rid of the account number, and then I'm going to see what happens if I try and merge it. It says it'll merge. I click merge. I click save. We cannot merge two accounts that are both set up for online banking or web connect. So you'll need to disconnect it first, merge, and then reconnect it. Okay. To do that, we'll go to where our bank accounts are, uh, are where the, uh, the downloaded is. We're basically going into the waiting room. Do you see this little, uh, this little tiny, well, let me zoom in here. You see this little tiny pencil right here. So if we click on this, um, edit sign in info, edit account info, let's edit the account info. You see where it says disconnect this account. I'll check the box. It disconnects it. You may have to do that anyway, periodically, when the connection becomes distorted or frayed um, and it gives you issues, you may have to disconnect and reconnect, all right? So um, obviously we have a lot more questions that we could answer. We are four minutes over. Um, how are y'all feeling about downloading? Is this something that you feel a little bit more comfortable trying? Um, what do y'all think? We feeling good now one thing and Barbara do you want to make the point I'll let you make the point because Barbara has very strong feelings about relying on downloading transactions instead of entering things manually okay so tell me Barbara when do you think they should enter it manually and match it versus just relying on the download what are your thoughts well for me the problem with waiting for the things to come into the holding tank is that you're basically doing bank balance accounting. And so if you have um, large checks that you've written and they haven't cleared, you might think you have more money in the bank than you really have if you haven't recorded the check, right? Mm -hmm. um, or in the case, like I work with a lot of houses of worship, as um, Greg mentioned. And so if you have a big deposit, let's say it was a lot of cash and you don't ever put that deposit in and somebody takes the cash and doesn't ever go to the bank, you're never going to know that, right? right? Because you don't have any check and balance with that. So I like to stay ahead of the download personally, and then do lots of matches. Like everything that comes into the holding tank should be a match. And anything that isn't a match, you're like, oh, why did that happen? But for sure, credit cards, 100%. I would, I would connect those in a heartbeat because there's always somebody on staff that isn't giving you their receipts and it takes you so long to reconcile your credit card statement. So if you had, if you haven't started bank downloads, at least start there. It'll save you so much time. I agree. Start with the credit card. And I will tell you, and this is true for the desktop as well. When you go to reconcile a credit card, 
what's so amazing is that all of the transactions that are downloaded, they will already be checked. So doing a bank rec or a credit card rec becomes very quick because all the transactions are already checked that came from the download. Um, and this is almost always there. I can do a year's worth of bank recs in like five seconds, literally. Okay. All right. Uh is QBO customizable for nonprofit use? Absolutely. That's what we um, teach in our three-day training. All right, Aretha, I'm going to turn it back over to you. I'm going to put the little um, thing up for you to get the coupon, $40 off the training because it's coming up. It's a good time to sign up. Yes, and that was awesome. I'm going to my QuickBooks right now because you just taught me something today. Thank you so much. Um, just a reminder, this is recorded. I'm going to... I um, plan to send this to you by tomorrow. So look for that coupon, the slides, and the video recording by tomorrow. Thank you, Greg. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.